morning. This is Pastor Thurman, assistant pastor here at Christian Life Center. Pastor Lucas is away on a much needed break this week. This morning, we're gonna be looking at the world around us real quick. We lived in troubled times. Right now, people are looking for answers and the Bible has answers. This morning, we're gonna talk about a spiritual recipe to be able to get through these times and not only these times, but this life in general. We're gonna look at three things. Who and what are you trusting? Who or what do you give recognition? And thirdly, real wisdom. We're gonna be coming from the subject, how do we get through this? And our main, our main passage will be coming from Proverbs chapter three, verses five through seven. Let us begin. Proverbs chapter three, verse five through seven says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. And then he, he tops it off by saying, it will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones. Who or what are you trusting? First verse, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean to your own understanding. We have to trust in the Lord with everything that we have, with every fiber in our being. Why? Because there's nothing in this world that we can trust. Everything in this world is fading. Everything in this world is on its way out. Psalms 62.8 says this. Trust in him at all times, O people, and pour out your hearts before him. God is a refuge for us. Selah. It says, trust in the Lord, all you peoples, and pour out your hearts before him. No matter what we're feeling, no matter what we're thinking, we need to pour it out before the Lord, meaning, Lord, I'm scared. Lord, I'm afraid. Lord, I don't understand. Lord, I'm looking for an answer. But we need to know that we can trust in him. And whether he clears it up for us or not, or just tells us to trust him, we know that by trusting him, we will get through this. We do, may not know what what's going to happen tomorrow, but we do know who holds the future. And it's God himself. And it says that God is a refuge for us. In this world, in these troubling, trying times, we need a refuge. We need to go somewhere where the outside world can't touch us and we feel safe. And that's in the arms of our Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and his Father, God, the whole, God of the universe. Psalms 32, verse 10. Many are the sorrows of the wicked, but steadfast love surrounds the one who trusts in the Lord. The world is full of sorrow right now. They don't understand what's going on. COVID is going on, uh, uh, misunderstandings and not, un not knowing what's going on with the government and leadership and all these things are happening around us. People killing people, children going against parents, all sorts of craziness is going on right now. Besides all of that, whatever is your personal issue that's going on in your personal life, and we have to deal with all of this. But those who don't know God, they're full of sorrows because they have no answer, and no one to trust in. But this says, many are the sorrows of the wicked, but steadfast love surrounds the one who trusts in the Lord. If we trust in God, his love surrounds us and holds us like a mother holds her baby and the baby feels secure. We can feel secure in God if we trust him. That's what this word is telling us this morning, that we need to trust in God. There was one who trusted in God more than I've ever seen. And his name was Job. And Job said this, Job 13, 15. Job said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Yet will I argue my ways before his face. See, Job had lost everything. He lost all his children. He lost all his property. He lost all his animals. He lost everything except for his wife who told him, curse God and die. He told her that you speak like a foolish woman. Now, he didn't say she was a foolish woman because she believed in God. The definition of a fool is one who has said in their heart, there is no God. But he said, you speak like a foolish woman. And then he goes on to say this, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. At this point, Job had sores all over his body. He lost everything. And all he could do is sit there with a broken piece of pottery and scrape his sores. And he said, even if God slays me, I will still trust him. 
Why? Because earlier Job said, if we receive all the good things from God, why shouldn't we receive the bad things? Not everything in this world is going to be good. Not everything in this world is going to be pleasant. Not everything in this world is going to be full of joy. Job said that man's days are but few and full of trouble. Not a little bit of trouble, but full of trouble. This world is cursed in case we forgot. Just because we belong to God doesn't mean everything's going to be fine down here. We still have to hold on to his unchanging hands. We have to trust him. Secondly, who or what do you give recognition? Back to our key text, Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 3 says this. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. Everything we do, in everything we do, we have to acknowledge God. If we have a good job, we have to acknowledge that God blessed us with it. If we're sitting in public eating at a restaurant, we have to thank God, give God thanks for this meal. Even if someone's looking at us, we can't be embarrassed to praise the Lord in public. If someone comes and asks us to do something that goes against what God says, we can't be ashamed to say, I belong to the Most High and I can't do that. If our boss on our jobs wants us to do something against God, we have to say, I belong to the Most High and I can't do those things. I have to recognize God in everything that I do. I have to trust in God in everything that I do, but I also have to acknowledge him. And when we trust him and then acknowledge him, he will make our path straight. Do you know what that means? I'm glad you asked because I'm going to tell you. It means this. It means that in this life, our paths seem to go like this and we don't know where we're going. But when we trust in God, he makes our path straight, meaning God says go right or go left. Take three steps, take five steps, go this far and then wait for me. When we do those things, our pathway is not confusing. Why? Because our steps are ordered by the Lord and we're going to only go where he takes us and he cannot fail. Come on, somebody, walk with me this morning. Daniel chapter 4 verse 30. Daniel chapter 4, verse 30. King Nebuchadnezzar. A messenger from the Lord came directly to Nebuchadnezzar. And he told him of a prophecy that was going to happen to him if he didn't let go of his pride and acknowledge the Most High. And this is what he said. And the king answered and said, Is this not the great Babylon which I have built by my mighty power and royal residence? for the glory of my majesty. He gave glory and recognition to himself. And you know what happened in Nebuchadnezzar? What happened in Nebuchadnezzar is he was struck with a, a, a disease, a de defect that's literally in his life called lycanthropy. And the definition of it is this, a form of madness or insanity involving the delusion of being an animal. And for seven years, Nebuchadnezzar crawled around in a field, and it's, the Bible says that his hair was long like eagle's feathers. And I'm taking that that means it was probably all matted together. And it says that his fingernails were real long like claws, and he ate the, ate the grass like an ox, and he laid in the dew of the grass like an animal does. And he stayed that way for seven years until, verse 34, it says, at the end of the days. I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted my eyes to heaven, and my reason, or sanity, returned to me. And I blessed the Most High, and praised and honored him who lives forever. For his dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom endures from generation to generation. When we recognize the Most High, we don't have to worry about what comes. When we don't recognize the Most High, and we try to take the credit for ourselves, we can only ask for trouble. God is the one who blesses us with all good things. God is the one who brings trouble and issues in our lives to get us back on the path, to get our mind focused back on him. That's what he does. I know this because I've seen it in my own life. I've watched him change my path from this way to that way. I've watched him taking me from there to here. And I can say just like Job that I trust in him. No matter what happens, I can't let go of his hand because I can't trust me. And therefore, because I can't trust me that I know better than anybody, I can't trust anybody else. I trust the Most High. Psalm 37, 23 says this. The steps of a man are established or ordered by the Lord when... 
he delights in his way. When we delight in the way of the Lord and we trust in the way of the Lord and we recognize him and we acknowledge him, God makes our steps ordered by him. Just like when you order a pizza, you order exactly on what you want. And when it comes to your house, you get exactly what you ordered. When our steps are ordered by God and we delight in his way, that we walk the way that God has called us to walk, the way that he's telling us to walk, turn right, turn left, take five steps, stand still, hold up, wait for me. When we follow the unction of the Holy Spirit and the steps of the Lord, we cannot go wrong because God cannot go wrong and God will not steer us wrong. And no matter what the enemy tries to do, our pathway still follows the Lord. Amen, somebody. Thirdly, our third point is real wisdom. Back to our key text for a moment. Proverbs 3, verse 7. It says this, Be not wise in your own eyes, but fear the Lord and turn away from evil. We got to walk through this one backwards just for a moment. Turn away from evil. We all know that there's a line in the sand between good and evil, and too many Christians try to walk that line to see how close to the line as we can get, and we end up crossing that line or falling across the line and spending too much time on the wrong side of the line. The line is not there to see how close we can get to it, but the line is there for us to see that there is a line, and we should go as far away from that line as we can to get further in the will of God and further away from what the world has to offer. So we need to turn away from evil. But it also says we need to fear the Lord. Now, fear of the Lord does not mean to sit in a corner and tremble and be terrified. That's not what it means. It means to have a reverential respect for God, to hold God in high esteem, to hold God up to who he is, to where he is. And he should be way above anything that we value in our lives. He should be better than number one. He should be better than anything and more important than anything that we have in our lives. More important than our mother, our father, our wife, our children. Why? Because he gave us all those things and because he sustains us and because he's going to bring us from this life into the next. We need to hold God in high esteem. But it says, be not wise in your own eyes. The wisdom of man is foolishness to God. We don't have the wisdom we think we do. We think because someone has gray hair, oh, they must be wise. I got all kinds of gray hairs. It doesn't give me a bit of wisdom. Trusting in God and knowing God's word and following God's word, that's where the wisdom lies. What is wisdom, you ask? Wisdom is studying God's word, knowing what to do and when to do it, and then also doing it. How to apply that which you have learned and then applying it. That's what wisdom actually is. So let's look at Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10. And it says this, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is insight. You see, the fear of the Lord, meaning having a reverential respect for God, that's the very beginning, the scratching the surface, just the start of wisdom. Once we hold God in high esteem and we recognize God for who he is, and we hold him in that place in our hearts and in our lives, that's the beginning of wisdom. Why? Because now we're applying what we have learned. And it says it's, it's just the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the Holy One is insight. Once we give our lives to Christ, the Holy Spirit comes to indwell us. And one of the things that the Holy Spirit does is illuminate our mind to be able to understand the things of God. Many people who are outside of the kingdom of God try to read the word and try to decipher what it means. And they come up with all these crazy ideas. But without being born again and having the Holy Spirit indwelling you, living on the inside, you truly can't understand the word of God. And the more we study the word of God, the more we understand the word of God. And the more we understand the word of God, the more we should apply the word of God. And when we apply it, we begin to live out the word of God. And we begin to assert ourselves into God's will and do what God has called us to do. We can't know what God has called us to do if we're not in his word and if we're not in his will. So we have to be there in order to be asserting ourselves into wisdom, in order to attain wisdom and then to live this wisdom out. The knowledge of the Holy One is insight. 
The more knowledge we have about God, the more insight we have about this life. The bigger we see God, the smaller we'll see this world. The smaller we'll see how, our, how small our situation is. The more significance we place on God, the more insignificant we'll see how all these problems on this side are. Because the Bible that I read says that the sufferings of this present age are not worthy to be even compared with the glory that is to come. We have to go through this low land of sorrows. We're not, a, we're not a resident here once we give our lives to Christ. We're just sojourners. We're traveling through. We're going through here like, like a person on vacation stays in a hotel. That's not their home. They're going to come back home. Once we belong to God, this is no longer our home. We're just traveling through. We have to be here for a little while. Yes, we have to work. Yes, we have to pay our bills. Yes, we have to deal with our mortgage. Yes, we have to drive and deal with traffic and obey the laws and all those kind of things. Why? Because we have to function while we're down here. But we're on our way to a much better place if we belong to him. That's what this is telling us. 2 Timothy 3.15, which is our last verse for this morning. And it says this. And how from childhood you have been acquainted with the sacred writings. That's personally to Timothy. But this second part can apply to anyone, and that's why I brought it out this morning. But it says to Timothy, how from a childhood you've been acquainted with the sacred writings, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. The scriptures are able to make all of us wise for salvation in Jesus Christ. There is salvation in no other. The Bible says that we must be saved by Jesus Christ because there's salvation in no other name under heaven. And once we give our lives to, to Jesus Christ, we are now born again. We're now brought out of the darkness into his marvelous light. We are now give, brought into the kingdom of God. We are now forgiven. We're not only just forgiven, but we're justified, meaning it's as if we never transgressed the law of God. That's what this salvation on, in this life is. When we trust God, when we acknowledge God, and then when we exercise the wisdom that he's given us, getting through this life isn't that hard. And let me share something with you. An unsaved person can apply biblical principles to their life, and guess what? They'll work. But guess what? They only work on this side. They're only good for making this a little bit easier down here, a little bit better to function down here, because you'll never make it to the other side except for where you don't want to be. But when we give our lives to Christ, now we can function on this side. Now we can get through this side. And not only that, when we get through this side, we're going to be in heaven with him for all eternity. That's what salvation is. So remember these things this morning. Trust in him with all your heart and don't lean to your own understanding. All your ways, acknowledge him. And don't be wise in your own sight, but it's experience, accept, and exercise the wisdom of God. May God bless you and have him smile upon you. Let us look to the Lord. Father, we come before you this morning. We just want to thank you for your word. We pray that you bless it. Not only that it goes out, but we pray that you bless the ears that hear it and the hearts that receive it. And we pray, Lord, for salvation for all those who don't have it. Lord, we just commit ourselves into your hands. We pray traveling mercies for Pastor Lucas. And in the mighty matchless name of Jesus the Christ, our prayer says, Amen. If you heard the word and the word speaks to your heart and you want to give your life to Jesus Christ this morning, you can pray a prayer like this. Lord, I know I'm a sinner. And I know I can't save myself. I'm asking you, Lord, to come into my life and save me. Thank you for saving me. Now teach me how to live according to your word. In the mighty matchless name of Jesus the Christ, my prayer says, amen. If you prayed that prayer this morning, we pray that you were sincere. And if you were sincere, we know you're saved. May God bless you and have a smile upon you.